Welcome back. Demonstrators supporting the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe faced off with private security officers from Dallas-based Energy Transfer Partners over a pipeline that is to run through a sacred burial ground. Henry, do you think the Native Americans have a good reason for their actions, and how do we deal with it? Uh, let me flip this on, on the other side of the coin here, since we're on the flip side. Um, <laughs> What if France decided to put a pipeline underneath um, the cemetery at Normandy? How would we feel about that? Okay, to us, we consider that's sacred ground, hollow ground. You know, American soldiers died, you know, fighting for freedom from World War II. How would we feel about that? We would be upset. And to the Indian nation, which is independent of the United States, they, they feel that that is sacred and hollow ground to them. I can't think of a reason why we couldn't find a better alternative or route. And that's not even talking about the environmental issues, but you know, just for the fact that they're, re they're revering this land, why can't we do something better to... In other better? words, what would happen if Columbia a Gas Company wanted to put a pipeline underneath of uh, the cemetery in the South End? Exactly. Um, what do you think, uh, Mary? Well, I'm trying to understand this fully, so the pipeline now, correct me if I'm wrong, would not actually go through the reserve or the, um, you know, what is considered to be the parameters the up there. Grounds. Right. But they're saying it would go a half mile off of the Missouri River, which is their main water source, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And there's a potential that there's, you know, contamination risks and things like that. So this is sort of, you know, potential. Not saying that we should move forward with it, but I think we do need to keep in mind that. Um, you know, it wouldn't be going directly through the burial grounds. It, is that what you guys understand it to be? A I little just want bit. To I think they're, they're still, you know, that's what the protest is about, is mm -hmm. negotiating or trying to come up with a compromise for another route. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some other options that, that could happen, and it, it um, isn't just about the burial ground it, itself and it being sacred, but um, l like you mentioned, Mary, the, the water as um, their source for um, not only, you know, their environmental needs, but also their, you know, cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, so what I understand is it's going under the river, and there's also a fight with it being federal land versus private land, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, again, it's just, it's a, it's a matter of cultural importance, whether you're in France, whether you're in Washington County, whether you're, you know, out here in, um, in North Dakota. So I, I think they're gonna have to find some sort of compromise. You know, they've tried locally. We built Black Rock Golf Course. You probably don't know, but there's a graveyard on Black Rock Golf Course. Mm -hmm. So we had to deal with that when we built the course. When we built the landfill, there were burial plots at the land that we, 400 acres that we bought for the landfill. We had to deal with that. I can't see why the federal government hasn't already come up with an alternative plan of not disturbing sacred grounds from the Native American Indian. It's just, it's very unfortunate because the construction already started. So it's, it's, I mean, and I'm not saying that it should continue, it's just they're really in a difficult situation because it's not, you know, it's not something that is a future plan, but it's something that's happening right now, so. Yeah. It's a four well, billion dollar project. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing to think about is, you know, it's done for a cost savings. That's why we're doing pipelines. And yeah, I mean, significant, when I was looking at numbers, it would cost a third the cost if we were to ship it, you know, by a pipeline versus shipping it over rail. And when you, it would take one and a half million tanker trucks to equal the daily volume that you do on the, the pipeline. So there, we're doing for, so to think that we can do additional expense, but then if you look at the, the dangers of the pipeline environmentally, mm -hmm. it's the third riskiest means in which to transport crude oil across the, you know, across to get it to the destination processing plant. <coughs> so there's a lot of concerns beyond just, you know, uh, sacred grounds. There's the environmental factor and it's a cost factor from the, the business side. So they have to work together. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it's been relatively peaceful? I, I've read that there were 300 arrests that have been made since August, but yeah. it's tough to find <coughs> a lot about this in, in media right now. It's not like your typical protests that have been happening, happening I, I around the country. I think we're more focused on the, the elections than focused on, <laughs> uh, so, you know, what's going on, you know, in, in someone's backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the pipeline, uh, the oil will stay in this country, as I understand it. It will go to a refinery in, uh, 
in the Chicago area, the Illinois area, uh, and that's a positive thing, that it won't be transported out of the country. Right. So we have to come up with a solution to the problem. But the Native American Indian, come on, we've we got to take care of the folks that uh, were well, here that, when that, we got that here. That is a, a great point. It really is. Up next, Fast Five. Stay tuned.